Look at what Jesus is saying. The answer according to the times. Like I said before, it's the first miracle as a virgin, right? I, I spoke last week about Mark chapter 1, verses 15, and this is the first miracle in the wedding at Cana. Now, Jesus, his disciples, and Mary, they were all invited. They didn't just go to the wedding because they were hungry. They were invited. Hey, son, Jesus, all of the wine is gone. We're, we've run out of wine, so what should we do? In John chapter 2, verse 4, Jesus says, Woman! For 30 years, imagine Jesus, this young son. Imagine your young son calls you woman. Imagine if your son calls you woman. You'll probably say, oh man, is my, is my son crazy? Woman. Why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. There is no horror. There needs to be a stage for performers to perform. The Lord says to his mother, Why do you involve me? What does that have to do with me? Gave her a cold shoulder. My hour is horror. It refers to the time where he receives his glory. So why do you involve me? You know, people, they don't know that I'm the Messiah. People treat me like I'm a, I'm a person, so how, my time has not yet come. My hour has not yet come, so how can I do my work? Right? Why do you involve me? What authority do you have over me? That's what he means. Now, Jesus, he went to um, the the men who were filled with devils, right? And he told them, hey, you two demon-possessed men. And the te two demon-possessed men, they say to him, son of God, what do you want with us? This is recorded in Matthew chapter 8, verse 29, and Mark chapter 1, verse 24, and Luke chapter 8, verse 28. In other words, they're, they're feeling... Is, is different. In the Bible, you know, what the, why do you involve me? It was used when, when they were enraged or angry or with disdain or despise in uh, Judges chapter 11, verse 12, or 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 10. But Jesus' reply, Jesus' reply may seem to denigrate Mary and the authority of Mary, but the detail is different. Then why did Jesus call his mother, who he's called mother for the past 30 years, why did he call her woman? For 30 years he called her mother. Now, Joseph, the father, died early on. Now the eldest son, Jesus, is taking care of all of his siblings and the mother. All of a sudden, he didn't call her mother. He said, you woman. What authority do you have speaking and commanding me? 
Mary. She must have been flabbergasted. As if a meteor struck her. But let's look at Jesus, who, who loves his mother, right? He says, Mother, the reason I speak to you this way is not to denigrate you or to ignore you. You know, you have enough material to be enlightened. Jesus for 30 years, lived a public life. But now he has started his public life. He is no longer Mary's son. He is God's son. He is the son of God. Jesus says to Mary, Woman, why do you involve me? A thunder must have struck Mary and woke in her spirit. You know, as soon as Mary realized this, look at her. She says, she says to the servants, whatever Jesus commands you, do it. It is the will of the profound and mysterious word. Now it's public life. Now it's a public life. He looked like creation, but at this moment, he was God the creator. In order to fulfill God's mission, he works with all of humane and godly. M mother. I am no longer a person who acts upon your will. I am now, I must now work for God's will, for my Father's will. He didn't call Mary his mother and called him woman. And the reason is to tell her, Mother, I created you. You were created through the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God, and it was God. This word created all of the universe and creation. Without Jesus, there is nothing that would have been created. Only through Jesus, everything was created. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 records this. Mother. You were conceived through the relation of a man and a woman, but I am different. Under the heavens, you know the most, you know the best of how I was born into this world. My hour has not yet come. So Jesus... Let's look at Jesus. His mother goes to his servants and says, no matter what Jesus says, obey him. After Jesus saw this, Jesus commanded to fill the jars with water. Was that it? No. Go bring that to, to, to the owners, to those who, who will drink the wine. Everyone, you know, they, they said, Oh man, most houses, they bring out the, the good wine first and the, the bad wine when everyone is drunk. But this house is different. The mother was born through relations of a man and woman. But Jesus was born through the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 1 or Matthew chapter 1 records this. In Romans chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. We see that Jesus is both, both 
of man, the lineage of man, and the lineage of the Spirit. Lineage of the Father. So you, mother, too, must believe in me as God the Creator. You must believe in me in order for you to be saved. Even Jesus' mother had to believe in Jesus as the Messiah in order for her to be saved and enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you must properly be enlightened of me. And that's where Jesus, Jesus told this to her in Cana. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 1, we see that Jesus is the son of David and the son of Abraham. And in Luke chapter 3 is the opposite. It's in, as, it's in ascending order. And is that it? No. In John chapter 8, verses 53 through 56 and verse 58, what does it say? Hey, you guys, your, your ancestor Abraham didn't act this way. You know, he, they, he didn't try to kill me and scorn me. And all of the Israelites, you know, they call Abraham their father. They consider Abraham their father. So they, they asked Jesus, Hey, are you greater than our father, Abraham? You know, you, you don't even look 50 years old. You know, Jesus, he probably, you know, went through a lot of difficulties, so he probably looked a lot older than what he was. He said, you know, you've seen our father, Abraham? And Jesus said, I, your father, Abraham, rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it. And he was glad. And so they tried to stone him. And so Jesus had to run away. Jesus said that he existed before Abraham. And Abraham saw him and was glad. So is calling Mary a woman a sin? He loved his physical mother. He followed in the lineage of David. But in God's will, he is David's root. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 5, it records, or in Revelation chapter 22 verse 16, it records that he is the root of David. And so the religious leaders, they lost um, in a debate with Jesus, right? And they came to Jesus and they started testing Jesus. Rabbi, Rabbi, which commandment is the greatest? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like, love your neighbors as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And so the, the religious leaders... There were many gathered around and Jesus said, hey, let me ask you something. What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? And the religious leaders just say, oh, yeah, we're going to get him here. And they said, they, you come as a son of David. Oh, yeah, Jesus replied. Then how is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? Why does David call him Lord? If Jesus, the Messiah, is the root of David, then why does David call him Lord? From that moment on, the Pharisees couldn't say a single word back at Jesus. Let's read it. You know, this is to clarify that you know, Jesus wasn't denigrating his, his mother. You know, God, Jesus is God. When he started his public life, you know, don't think of him as a person. 
Even Jesus' mother needs to believe in Jesus for her to be saved. Now, Matthew chapter 22. Forty-one. Matthew chapter 22, verse 41. Look it up. Matthew chapter 22, verse 41. You know, I'm, I'm, we're reading this because I'm afraid that you'll doubt why Jesus called Mary his mother. You know, in Matthew chapter 1, Jesus is the son of David and the son of Abraham, right? But when he started his public life, David is the son of Jesus, and Abraham is also the son of Jesus. Let's all read it together. Matthew chapter 22, verses 41 and onwards. Let's read it. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then? that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord. For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Verse 45, let's read it together. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. So they became mute. You know, these dogs who were barking at David or were barking at Jesus were completely mute. They were muted. Listen carefully. Woman, why do you involve me? A lightning must have struck Mary. And Mary must have completely remembered the process of Jesus' birth. That was the grace of God. Before, you know, she conceived Jesus, she remembered Gabriel come and seeking her. Hey, the Messiah will be born through you. And when she was shaking, right through the Holy Spirit, you will be conceived, or you will conceive. Luke chapter 6 verses 38 and we see John the Baptist's mother it's been six months since she conceived John and when Mary was young as soon as she heard the news as soon as Mary and Elizabeth met one another John the Baptist was dancing inside the womb because he was so joyful and happy. He already knew through the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist, when Mary spoke of her conceivement, was joyous and happy, overturning in the womb. In Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 40 records this. On the night of Jesus' birth, the shepherds came, gathered around after hearing the news from the angels. You know, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. And so all the shepherds, they, they threw aside their staff and they, they went to go seek out Mary to, to go and, and look upon that bloodstained baby. And Mary, when you look at the Bible, treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. She put it all in her heart. And as soon as Jesus said, woman, the lightning struck her head and she remembered all of these things that she stored away in her heart. Look at, look at the will of God. In 
in this world, no matter how hard you farm, no matter how much you seed and water, it takes months to grow something, right? But let's look at Jesus's harvest. He, you know, with five pieces of bread and two fish, he instantly harvested and fed, you know, over 20,000 people, men, women, and children. And after completely, you know, satisfying their needs, they gathered up all the leftovers and it filled 12 full baskets after they were completely full. It's an instant. On the foundation of Hora, of faith, Mary, the mother of, built this foundation of faith, and Jesus was able to perform on it. He was able to work on it. You know, you may follow Jesus your entire life, but you don't even know what Hora is. That's flabbergasting. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 19, we see the Magi, the three, three wise men, took months in their travel and came to Herod's palace. Oh, you're not the king that we were waiting for. Where's the other guy? Right? And they brought myrrh and frankincense and gold. These magi came. And these big men started bowing down to Jesus. And Mary, she treasured all of this in her heart. And then... At the, at the temple, we see Simeon and Anna. She became a widow after seven years of her marriage, and she's been a widow for 84 years. If you add it, that's 91 years. So, you know, she must have gotten married at, what, 15, 16, 17 years old, right? So she's over 100 years old. Did somebody tell her? No, after eight days of, of Jesus being born, Joseph and Mary brought this baby Jesus into the temple to get, you know, circumcised. And Anna saw this baby. And what did she say? You may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. And then she spoke of the prophecies, right? That his parents saw him and they were astonished. You know, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. And you, Mary, will have a sword that will pierce your own soul. Why? Because Mary, the mother, will see Jesus hanging on the cross, being pierced by the spear, the, the, the crown of thorns and thistles. The prophecy of Simeon and Anna came true. Is that it? It's been several hours, you know, after the birth. You know, it, after you're born, a, a woman cannot walk. You know, uh, after your wife gives birth, then the mother-in-law or, or the husband must treat the mother with care. You know, you have to take care of her so that even when she becomes 50 or 60 years old and when it rains or snows, her back doesn't hurt. You know, if you meet a bad mother-in-law, then that mother-in-law would probably say, oh, I, I did all the housework, you know, right after I had my child. You know, you're young, so why, why, why do you act all sick? You know, that's an evil mother-in-law. You must, you must treat your daughter-in-law well after they have a child, you know, in order to be blessed by God. You know, how can you treat that mother with, you know, you don't, you don't treat her very well. You don't take care of her. You don't make her a meal. In the Old Testament, if you have a man or if you have a boy, then you get to rest for 33 days. And if you have a daughter, it's 66 days. Now, you have to read the Bible to know. Hey, hey, 
hurry up, hurry up, hurry up and wrap the child up and run away. Where? Run where? Go to Egypt. Go there. Stay there until Herod dies. And after Herod died, God calls them and, and calls them into Nazareth. Matthew chapter 2 verses 13 through 15. Is it a lie? Woman. Mary remembered. And then in the Passover, when Jesus was 12 years old, uh, the mother, Joseph and Mary, brought, you know, Jesus to the temple. And when they were returning back home, you know, they thought that this 12-year-old son would follow behind them. But when they looked backwards, Jesus wasn't there. Hey, where, where's Jesus? Oh, I don't know. Uh, so they started going back. And start searching everywhere. They would go into the temple asking the priest, Hey, have you seen my son? Have you seen my son? And when they found Jesus, Jesus was talking with the priests. And they said, His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And what did Jesus say? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? And what did Mary do? Mary she held this in her heart. You know, she saved it in her heart. Why do you save it? In order to use it later on, right? In the Bible, Mary saved this in her heart. And as soon as Jesus said, woman, at that moment, all of the things that she saved in her heart came up. Mother, I am not a physical son. Did you have relations with a man and conceive me? No, you didn't. You conceived me through the Holy Spirit. You, you know, you and Father Joseph had the other siblings, but what did the angel tell you? You know, do not be afraid to bring her home. She did not conceive a baby with having relations with another man, but she, had, she was conceived through the Holy Spirit. Name him Jesus. And until he is born, Joseph and Mary never had any relations. And he, she knows all of this. In the start of public life, The Mary, mother, must have heard the testimony of John the Baptist, right? Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Luke chapter 2, verse 19 and verse 51. And she kept it in her heart. She saved it in her heart. Now, Zechariah, he was in the temple according to uh, the feast. And his wife conceived a child and God he he made Zachariah mute so that he wouldn't say anything useless and then at the end he received the prophecy from God you know the all the other people they were trying to name this baby Zachariah after the father but Zachariah he said hey no 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 bring me bring me a <coughs> bring me a a rock and he and he wrote down the name. It was John. The name that he received as a prophecy was John. So he wrote the name John. Every other person was trying to name him Zechariah after the father. But Zechariah said, no, God told me to name him John. And the physical mother, Mary. Mary heard this. Please follow along. Luke chapter 2, verse 19. Luke chapter 2, verse 19. Treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And follow along. Luke chapter 2, verse 51. Follow along. Luke chapter 2, verse 51. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Why didn't she throw it away? Why did she save it in her heart? When you look at the Hebrew meaning of treasured all these things in her heart, it means that she kept it. 
She held on to it. Loving congregation members. Your time may not yet have come. But when Jesus spoke, the servants obeyed instantly. They didn't say anything but obeyed. And Jesus knew this. And Jesus was able to glorify God. And he was glorified because of the foundation that his mother Mary laid. Fill the pots and then take the pots to the house. Our Pyongyang Chil Church members must understand the time of God. And you, I pray, may always be on the foundation of Hora and live according to the will of God. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. Now, I only covered a third today, but we'll cover it next time. Now, people, they complain that I, I preach for too long. Let us pray. On this blessed and glorious day, Father, for this entire week, we have unable to read the Bible or pray or lift up a praise before you. But Father, through the word that you have given us today, we have woken up. And we, I pray that you may grant us the mysterious and profound blessing of Hora. May we hold on to the Hora until the end. So that even if we enter into the darkest of valleys, through prayer, may all these darknesses be casted away. Father God, may we look upon you only. May we believe and follow you. And may we spread your gospel far and wide. Father God, we want to eat, drink, and worship before you. Father God, whenever we fall, I pray that you may bestow upon us your wisdom, your knowledge, and your strength. Father God, I pray that our Pyongyangjil Church may fulfill your final will and may we glorify you and bring joy to you in all ways. Father God, May you hold on to our Pyongyang Jail Church with your right hand, whether we're eating or drinking or whatever you are, we are doing. May we do it for your glory. Father God, if there is anyone who is ill, I pray through the blessing of Jesus Christ, may all illnesses be casted out. May everyone receive freedom from these illnesses. And we thank you. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you.